If you're running mission-critical software in production, chances are that you're using JFR in some way. In a nutshell, JFR is a structured logging tool that records a broad range of system-level events. There is some overlap with profiling because JFR can record CPU samples, memory samples, and information on waiting and blocking states of threads. While this information is coarse-grained, it can be of tremendous value in production systems where JFR can be enabled to safely run all the time. JProfiler has excellent support for viewing JFR snapshots that makes it the best tool in the market for analyzing them. In this screencast, I'm going to show what JProfiler can do for you in this regard. Here I have opened a snapshot that was captured during a programming session with IntelliJ IDEA. This snapshot is around half a gigabyte, which is a medium size for a JFR snapshot. JFR snapshots can become extremely large, depending on the recording configuration. JProfiler is designed to open them as quickly as possible and to provide a responsive UI no matter how big the snapshot is. The first thing that you see when opening a JFR snapshot is the event browser. JFR snapshots only store events, so the event browser shows you the entire contents of the snapshot. The other views mirror the JProfiler views for regular profiling where possible and provide enhanced analysis of certain event types. Let's check out the event browser first. Events are displayed in a tree of categories. Use the filter text field at the top to find particular events. Another way to navigate is to just type into the tree. Each event has a particular set of columns. If you select multiple event types, the common set of columns will be displayed. Both file read and socket read have a bytes read column. The scale of columns that show durations, memory, or frequencies are adjustable in the view settings dialog. Many JFR events have a stack trace that you can see in the selection tab whenever you select an event. Selecting multiple events will show a hotspots view of those events, with back traces below the hotspots. For event types that measure durations or memory sizes, you can show hotspots and backtraces for that measurement. Now you can see the memory allocated in the hotspot rather than the event count for each hotspot. An alternative view mode is the call tree for the selected events. In this call tree, there are truncated traces where the top of the call stack is missing. This happens frequently for JFR recordings and is the reason why the hotspot views often have a better quality than the call tree views for JFR snapshots. The footer of the table shows the total displayed event count. As you can see, the number 10,000 is different from the number 64,330 in the tree of the event types. This is because JProfiler only shows the first 10,000 events in the table to avoid overloading the UI. These 10,000 events are immediately available without JProfiler having to rescan the entire snapshot. For any kind of filter or analysis, JProfiler will take all events into consideration. For example, the hotspots view next to the selection tab will calculate the hotspots for all events. In the hotspots view, you can select any node and create a filter for the event table. A filter tag label will be added at the top of the event table. Any analysis view will show the filtered events, but exclude the filter that was set in the view itself. That is done so you can see which events were selected there. If we look at the call tree from which no filter has been set, it will only show the filtered events. The timeline analysis view is available for all event types because every event has a start time. By selecting a time range, you add a filter. Now you see two filters combined. The allocation size tab at the end is a histogram analysis view. These histograms are available for durations, memory, and frequency measurements. As we remove the filters, we can see how the distribution changes. You can add a filter by selecting a range here as well. Filtering is also possible in the event table with a filter selector at the top. or with the context-sensitive filter actions on event rows.
Moving on to the other view sections, the next section contains telemetries that are similar to the system telemetries in a regular profiling session, just calculated from JFR events. Here we see that the total recording duration was around 7 hours. In the memory section, the live objects view shows classes and instance counts after garbage collections. This data is available if the JDK object count event type has been enabled. The difference column shows the difference between the last and the first such event in the snapshot. The recorded objects view shows instances that were allocated during the recording. Hotspot and call tree analysis on a per class level are available as well. The CPU section contains call tree, hotspot and call graph with all features that are available for regular profiling sessions. The Threads section retains the Thread History view that shows threads with their operational states and stack traces and tooltips. Also, there is the Thread Dumps view that shows any thread dumps that are available in the JFR snapshot. The Monitors and Logs section only retains the Monitor History and the Monitor Usage Statistics views due to limited information on locking situations. Now we come to the probe section, where the availability of data depends on the event types that have been enabled for the recording. You can consult the documentation to see a table of event types that are required for all views in JProfiler. The supported probes are sockets, files, classes, exceptions, and garbage collector. The added benefit of these probes compared to the event browser is that they combine different event types to create an analysis of a subsystem of the JVM. As far as possible, they correspond to the equivalent probes for regular profiling sessions. On the one hand, JProfiler makes its powerful views available for JFR analysis. On the other hand, it contributes a fully featured JFR-specific event browser. Together, this makes JProfiler an excellent JFR viewer with a unique set of features.